Hello, and welcome to the BMC Quick Course Series. My name is Ken Zolkowski, and I'm a lead product developer based in San Jose, California. In this session, we will look at the new layering wizard in MainView Total Object Manager version 8.2. Layering is a powerful tool. It allows users to quickly and easily generate objects for one or more systems. An entire system's worth of objects can be defined in a very short period of time. Using layering, however, requires the definition of several different types of items, such as sysplexes and systems, in a specific order. Defining each item requires its own dialog. It is easy to miss an important step or perform it in the wrong order. The new layering wizard simplifies the work needed to generate objects and sets by providing a simple step-by-step -step dialog. Just issue the layering primary command from any TOM view. The user is guided through each of the steps needed to prepare for object or set generation in the right order. Nothing is missed. Generation works as expected each time. Before we generate objects or sets, we need to define other items that are necessary for the layering process. First, we need layer objects and or sets. These are much like any other object or set, except they cannot be started or stopped. Layer objects and or sets are used to quickly and easily update numerous objects in a single operation. They can be created either from a view such as TOBJ or from the TOM Discovery utility. Next, we define the sysplexes where the generated objects will be managed. If you specify the local sysplex, Tom will automatically specify the systems in that sysplex. Naming a sysplex other than the local will require that you identify the systems in that sysplex. When you define a layer object, you need to specify where it can run. After identifying the sysplexes and the systems, you might want to consider defining one or more system pools. A system pool can make the object generated from a layer movable. This can be done by specifying specific system names that the object can run upon. The order of the system names in the pool sets the affinity order for those systems. A system layer is used to group layer objects or sets together. A system layer allows you to selectively generate a subset of the objects for a given system. Let's say you wanted to group your network-related tasks, such as NET or TCP IP, together. You could define a system layer named Network and associate NET and TCP IP to it. If you wanted to only generate the NET and TCP IP objects, then you could just generate the network system layer. Sysplex layers are made up of one or more system layers. By associating system layers to a sysplex layer, you can generate the objects in more than one system layer at a time. When the structures such as layer objects, system pools, system layers, and sysplex layers have been defined, we are ready to generate objects. A simple command to generate against either a system layer or a sysplex layer will define the objects named in those layers quickly and easily. The layer object dialog is the first in the wizard. I want to point out before we continue the jump commands at the bottom of the dialog. With these, users can move to any point in the wizard, skipping over those steps that they have already performed or do not wish or need to perform. Let's select the layer object definitions and press enter. Here are the layer objects that have been defined in the active definition base. At this point, you can add a new layer object, delete or edit an existing one, browse the definition, or repeat an existing object so as to create another. As in previous releases, you are free to add a layer object to the definition base being edited from a view such as TST or TOBJ. Press N when you are finished to return to the Layer Object Definition dialog. From here, you can issue the next command to move on to the next step in the wizard. Tom needs to know about the sysplex and its systems where objects are to be generated. The sysplex definition describes either the local sysplex or another in the complex. It can contain all the systems or just a subset of the systems in the plex. 
This point in the layering wizard allows the user to define a sysplex and its systems. From here, you can add a new sysplex definition or edit an existing one. Adding a sysplex definition is simple. Issue the add primary command. Enter a 1 to 8 alphanumeric character sysplex name. It's OK to use the Tomplex name as well as any valid sysplex name. Use the next command to continue. Provide an optional description for the sysplex you are defining and issue next. If you use the name of the local sysplex, then Tom will fill in the system names for you. Tom will also supply the clone and layer IDs for each system. All three of these values, the system name, clone ID, and layer ID, are required to define a system. The system name needs to be the 1 to 8 character ID that identifies the system. The system's name can be found in the sysname parameter in the IEA sys member in sys1 parm live. Clone ID is the 1 to 2 character shorthand notation for the system named in the definition. The clone ID for a system should match the name specified in that system's IEA SYM member in sys one parm Live. Layer ID is a 1 to 4 integer value. It must be unique among the other systems involved in layering and is used as a substitute for actual system names in a layer object's valid systems list. Use the add primary command to add a system to the list. Fill in the dialog that appears. You can edit an existing system by using the edit line command. Systems can be deleted from the sysplex definition by using the delete line command. When you have finished adding, editing, or deleting systems in the sysplex definition, press end. You'll now see the new sysplex definition along with the number of systems identified for that sysplex. Now that the sysplex and its systems have been defined, we now have what we need to add system pools. Issue next to move to the next step in the wizard. We saw when defining the sysplex that this definition contains entries for the systems associated with that sysplex. Each system in the sysplex definition has a unique layer ID associated with each system. If you wanted to generate a movable object, then the layer object must have multiple VSL entries. To do this, the layer object needs a sys layering variable specified in the VSL for each system on which the object can run. Seems simple, right? The problem is that you cannot guarantee that sys5 will resolve to the same value on each sysplex. How do we get around this problem? System pools are your answer. Issue the add primary command and we'll start to define a system pool. We start by providing the system pool name. The name is 1 to 8 characters in length. Continue on by using the next command. Next, we provide an optional description for the system pool. The description is 1 to 40 characters in length. You can also decide if you wish to dynamically propagate changes made to the pool to any objects or sets generated from the layer objects associated with the pool. Press Next. The System Pool Systems portion of the dialog is where you choose which system names to associate with the pool. Issue the Add Primary command. Select which layer sysplex you wish to choose systems from and press End. Now you see a list of system names that you can select from to add to the pool. Notice in this example that we are selecting them with the numbers 1, 2, and 3. This sets the system affinity order for the generated object. When you have chosen the systems in the order you wish, then press End. Control returns to the system pool system and you see the names of the systems in the pool. They are listed in system affinity order. Save your changes by pressing End. We end up back at the System Pool Definitions dialog. You can see the pool that you just added. Included is the number of systems in the pool and the description that you provided. You can now put the name of this system pool in the VSL of a layer object. 
the generated object will be eligible to run on any of the systems listed in the pool in the affinity order shown. Pressing Next takes us on to defining the system layer. System layers allow you to logically group similar layer object and layer sets together. For example, you may want to group your objects related to the network into one group. Another may be for all your CICS related objects. Keeping objects with similar functions together in a system layer can make it easier to maintain these objects over time. From the System Layer Definition dialog, users can edit or delete existing system layers. System layers can be added from this dialog also. To define a system layer, start by issuing the Add Primary command. We start by providing the system layer name. The name is 1 to 16 characters in length. In this example, we'll be using the name Network. You'll want to choose a name that best describes the function of the objects that have been grouped together. Continue on by using the next command. On this part of the dialog, you can provide an optional description for the system layer. The description is 1 to 40 characters in length. You can also decide if you wish to dynamically propagate changes made to objects and sets generated from this system layer when a change is made to the associated layer objects or layer sets. The System Layer Members portion of the dialog is where you choose what layer objects or layer sets to associate with the system layer. Issue the AO primary command to add a layer object to the system layer. Here we see a list of all the layer objects in the test layer definition base. Add layer objects to the system layer by selecting the ones you want and then press enter. Now we see the layer objects we've chosen for the system layer. You can see here that we have selected three layer objects, all related to the network. This is fitting since the name of our system layer is network. Press end and control returns to the system layer definitions portion of the wizard. See that we have our network system layer and there is three layer objects associated. From here we can add another system layer as well as deleting or editing an existing one. Now that we have our system layers ready, we can associate them to our sysplex layers. A sysplex layer is a grouping of one or more system layers for a particular sysplex in your computing environment. Having multiple system layers in a sysplex layer provides greater flexibility. Each sysplex in the environment needs a basic system layer with objects like JES, LLA, and DLF. A sysplex also needs a network system layer with NET, TCP IP, and TSO. These system layers are included in each of the sysplex layers. You may also execute your CICS work on one sysplex and your IMS work on another. In such a case you could have a system layer with CICS objects and a system layer with IMS objects. The CICS system layer would be associated with one sysplex layer and the IMS system layer would be associated with the other sysplex layer. The sysplex layer definition dialog lets users edit or delete existing sysplex layers. Sysplex layers can be added from this dialog also. To define a sysplex layer, start by issuing the Add Primary command. Here's where we provide the sysplex layer name. The name is 1 to 16 characters in length. Like with the system layer, you'll want to choose a name that best describes this sysplex. Continue on by using the next command. Specifying a description is optional for the sysplex layer. The description is 1 to 40 characters in length. From here, you can also decide if you wish to dynamically propagate changes made to objects and sets generated from the sysplex layer. The sysplex layer members portion of the dialog is where you choose what system layer to associate with the sysplex layer. Issue the add primary command to add a system layer to the sysplex layer. 
Add System Layers to the Sysplex layer from this dialog. Select the system layers you want and press End. Press End to save the changes to the Sysplex layer. We return to the Sysplex layer definition dialog. See the entry for the Sysplex layer we have just added? You can see here that we have selected only one system layer. If there are more system layers to associate with the Sysplex layer, you can use the Edit Line command. With the Sysplex layer defined, we now have all the pieces needed to generate objects and sets. Issue the next command and we'll move on to generating objects and sets. Let's generate some objects. The Generation dialog allows us to generate for all the systems in the Sysplex or just a subset of those systems. We're going to generate for all the systems in this example. Select Object slash Sets for all systems in Sysplex and press Enter. Here we see a list of Sysplexes that have been identified to Tom. Select the Sysplex for which objects and sets will be generated. Issue the next command to continue to the next step. Now we select the Sysplex layer. The Sysplex layer contains one or more system layers, which in turn contain layer objects and layer sets from which objects and sets will be generated. Use the next command to continue. We are ready to trigger object generation. You need to identify where the objects or sets will be generated to. Select an existing definition base or provide the name of a new definition base. Issue the next command. Confirm the target definition base and sysplex. We also see the sysplex layer to use for generation. Double check your expected results by issuing the preview command. This is a list of the objects and sets that will be generated from the sysplex and sysplex layer you have provided. You can see the name of the objects or sets that will be generated, what system is in the VSL list, and the name of the layer used to create this object or set. When you have finished reviewing the objects or sets to be created, press N to return to the confirmation dialog. Everything looks good. Let's generate the objects and or sets. Press N. That's all it takes. The objects and sets are in the target definition base and ready to use. See the entry that can be selected under the Delete or Detach section? That represents the items we just generated. Selecting that entry and confirming the request to delete, just as we did to generate, is all that it takes to delete the generated items associated with that entry. Use the TST view and you'll see the finished product. We've generated objects for net, TCP IP and TSO for all the systems in the Sysplex. Quick, simple, and easy. Thank you for your time. For more information on any BMC mainframe product, please visit the URL shown here.